per usual for Gans Channels for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. No trading in the markets on Monday in the U.S. Futures markets are currently open. I'll get to that in a second. The biggest thing uh, this week will be, once again, GBTC outflows. That's going to be the single most important metric to watch. This is not only important for BTC, but also for altcoins, because if BTC ends up down, I don't know, 10% on the week, that's certainly going to drag everything with it. Even this near-term alt BTC strength will likely end after the DCG, sorry, GBTC selling is over. So I did a whole video on this Saturday. I'll just hit on the highlights. Uh, by the way, if you want to join the channel for $3 a month to say thank you to yours truly, you can do that through YouTube. Anyway, the TLDR of the TLDR is all this data is delayed. Don't believe the flows because you're looking at two day old data minimum. Uh, we'll know Tuesday. We'll know more at the end of the week, Friday, obviously. Are we going to see continued outflows? Are we going to see continued selling? And we can have a conversation about inflows, net, seed, funds remaining. You know, I don't really care about all that right now. I just don't. All that matters is GBTC clearly having an outsized effect regardless of what's going on. And on the inflow side, on price, just look at price, right? <laughs> pull up, pull up the spreadsheet of the inflows and put that next to price and ask yourself, does this make sense? Because it doesn't. If it truly is, we'll say fresh inflows versus outflows, something to sort of look for next week would be another chunky outflow reported from Grayscale, potentially to the tune of 9k BTC, just because what's been reported, and I know I'm going to sound like uh, the guy on a blackboard connecting all the, the lines, but what's been reported is X outflows, right? We'll say 500 million. And that really hasn't added up to the amount of BTC that's been reported out of the fund. So that leaves a remaining potentially, we'll just round it and say 8,500 BTC, depending on the price that they get. The odd part is we haven't seen the on-chain movements yet, which either wallets are labeled wrong, which is unlikely but possible, or there's potentially some off-chain off transactions that are occurring through Coinbase as a custodian, possible, or they're just super delayed, right? On-chain moves are just super delayed and things will catch up eventually, but in the moment, that hasn't hit the chain yet. The good news for all this is it's short-term. Who cares? Okay, this is Short term, it's going to get ugly as long as the GBTC outflows continue. And after that, it should be smooth sailing. We should continue to see fresh inflows, continued inflows, portfolio rebalancing and trillions of dollars in flows, right? The long game is ours. It's just what's going to happen for Q1, basically. And again, we can have this short conversation about who's selling GBTC versus who, has, who would have already sold it leading up to the ETF versus now. You definitely have the value sellers who are saying, look, the fee is too high. That's definitely a certain percentage of people in GBTC. You've got uh, the tactical people who were waiting for the discount to close. I'm sure most of them, most of those individuals closed before the ETF. I waited till it went live, the ETF. I closed my position at 41 GBTC price. Um, but the really the, the remainder, the largest percentage probably of people left would be the four sellers. And of the four sellers, FTX would be the largest holder. When GBTC launched, it was around a billion notional that FTX potentially had as of December 1st last year. I don't know if BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager, 3AC, I don't know or remember or really care. It doesn't really matter. We don't have those hard numbers because even if these claims or whatever were sold off, the claim holders, the people who would say like, look, I will give you X percent on the dollar to hold that and take that risk and maybe hedge it and maybe do whatever with it. But by now, either this week or the week after or throughout the quarter, right, all of this stuff is going to work its way through the system. And then, of course, you have DCG, who I don't know as a group how much GBTC they have. They have tons of bills to pay, fines to pay. And they, of course, have all this information on the back end. And uh, this is more of a nefarious accusation. But having all this information certainly helps to see what are your expected outflows going forward? Uh, knowing that information, being able to short the market off that information would be very, very useful. So I'm sure they adjusted the fee at 1.5% based on the percentage of outflows that they think 
will occur. I'm sure they're going to bring that down or at least attempt to, to sort of stem the bleeding. And I'm sure there's a tipping point at some sort of flow level where they will announce that, whatever. But the most important thing right now for Tuesday, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be, what do the outflows look like? Are they continuous? Are they large? They were certainly large on Friday. And then what are those reported numbers from last week? I'll keep track of all this, but it's going to be so delayed. You know, it doesn't really matter because (laughs) price is what matters. You know, we can talk about flows once things have come to an equilibrium. Once the supply shock, once the, the unlock of these coins is over, then we can talk about flows in earnest in a purer way. But right now we're still dealing with the GBTC stuff. I wanted to take a look at Google Trends as well. Bitcoin Google Trend data uh, perked up quite a bit leading into the ETF, which is always good to see. Definitely had tons of articles and eyeballs and attention. And of course, the SEC Twitter drama. So a lot of people were watching that. Um, Ethan Solana, as a measure of Google Trends here, basically flat. You know, nobody on a relative basis really paying attention to either of those chains at the moment. And you can see, maybe maybe not as easily, but if we take off ETC, There was a point in time here where Solana briefly peaked above Ethereum on Google Trends, which was likely that week where Solana went to 140 or whatever. If you're trading these pairs, it can be helpful to look at the Google Trends and try to determine, you know, clearly there was Solana strength relative to ETH in the weeks weeks leading up to that. Whereas now Solana may not overperform just based on this one data point, right? Just something to consider. And, you know, you can zoom this in however you want, but just something interesting to think about, right? And here's, this says everything, you know, I wouldn't expect Solana to continue to outperform in the near, near term. Now, is this data lagging? Yes. Is it, it's not real time. Keep that in mind. But if you're still sitting in a Solana position or whatever, thinking that, oh, it's going to continue to outperform ETH. Well, the Google Trends data wouldn't necessarily support that in the moment. You know, that's, that's how I'd read that. Also, Bitcoin ETF versus Ethereum ETF. You can see throughout the years, there's been various headlines and excitements about all things Bitcoin ETF. And ultimately that's, you know, spiked to its all-time high last week and that's coming way down. Uh, ETH stuff just kind of starting and it's just the beginning of really the potential for a serious conversation about an ETH ETF. So if we switch gears to futures, there's forwardation, there's backwardation. Forwardation often referred to as contango. I just refer to it as forwardation because that makes the most sense. But if there's a bullish futures curve, and generally there's there's bullishness in the market, you know, that's the noob understanding of the futures curve. But if there's a reason to expect bearish events, if this is like a commodity and there's a weather event coming up, you know, or there's a, a supply concern coming up, whatever's going on, you'll see that on the curve. Now, Bitcoin's obviously different. It's digital, but we do have events that affect the curve. Right now, on the crypto side, the curve is heavily positive. If we move to the CME future side, the curve in the near term is tipping into backwardation slightly, just slightly, whereas the longer term contracts, so the K would be uh, the May contract, has a 14% premium right now. Most of the activity is usually in the shorter end. Anyway, this is just another way to say, look, there's clearly some, some hedging going on here on the ETF side or the ETF AP side or some OTC provider, right? That's that's helping push, at least temporarily, these curves in the near term into backwardation. Once everything is all said and done, I think it's a fair expectation that you'd expect forwardation or contango to return. But in the near term, this is kind of saying, look, the uh, highest of high, you know, the top market participants who are trading on CME are pushing this uh, into backwardation slightly. Looking at daily Bitcoin cloud, we had our first breakdown below the support fractal. Again, high, low, high, you get a support fractal. Low, high, low, you get a resistance fractal. And so these support fractals act as a trailing stop loss. You can always have bids on the Kijun. That works most of the time. But again, we're dealing with a, say it with me, supply shock, okay, (laughs) an unlock. And that's the number one primo thing. You know, charts matter. But when you got something like, you know, 600,000 VTC remaining in that trust, that's going to be the most important thing. You know, that's $30 billion or whatever. Some of it's going to stay. The outflows are going to end up slowing down to a trickle. But next week, we will know what's going on, right? So a lot of this 
analysis price wise is going to be an if then if this then that statement you know if we continue to see massive outflows we go we go lower we probably go way lower we probably go easily in the cloud which would suggest a target of 34 5 yearly pivot at 34 5 but we'll see right it's just dependent on the flows as i've said before the easiest trade upcoming the next quarter or within this quarter the end of this quarter whatever it's going to be is a very similar trade to october 2023 where you know we went bearish fully on the cloud reset everything everything flipped bearish and then it was clear as day at 28k regardless of the coin telegraph intern which certainly certainly helped things but the technicals told you look this is a bullish kumo breakout clear as day so that's what i would rather see you know we get whatever price we get 34 35 36 38 don't care doesn't matter um and then into q2 we get a very similar bullish kumo breakout as an easy easy trade so near term let the temper tantrum happen let the outflows happen not much you can do about it anyway you know it's just it is what it is you're you're getting years of unlocked bitcoin hitting the market the eight hour cloud is also something we watched since the 28k breakout and this is also through the cloud so the next signal here again would be a full bullish reset this is this will flip bearish and then it will potentially flip back to bullish again now a lot of people are probably thinking well i can just short this right that's an easy trade he just said the outflows are going to continue right again this is if this then that if the outflows are big sure this is this, yeah this is going to go lower right that's a massive trade but it really depends on the flows so one setup potentially would be once the cloud does flip bull, bearish sorry on the eight hour that could be a short entry signal with a first target or a target somewhere around 35 and that would also be a bearish edge to edge through the cloud wherever we end up on whichever day right i just think the volatility of that trade is going to be difficult <laughs> let's say right because we may have some somebody come in and defend some level where we don't end up reaching the target and we bounce back on one day right it's it could just be absolute insanity on the pitchfork there's also confluence for you know high 30s let's say between now and march 1st so don't be shocked by that and like i've said before if you're honest you want lower prices so you get more btc in accumulation as we very likely eventually see some insane flows sustained inflows once TradFi is all connected and hooked up and portfolios start to rebalance. Another problem with longs up here is the, on the weekly cloud, we're losing the weekly cloud. Prior to last week's candle, I had said, we look pretty good up here. We're consolidating up here. And that was true, right? But clearly last week's candle, not pretty. Classify it as whichever version of a bearish reversal candlestick you want. But I certainly don't expect a reversal this week. Because again, I expect more GBTC outflows. And when we're back in the weekly cloud, things can get messy. And again, there's a there's a key June at 32-ish, whatever that is. So again, everything's kind of pointing to potentially as low as 35. We can also look at other confluence realized price, short-term holder realized price more specifically is also down there at 37. So like the break-even price for short-term on-chain movements would be 37. Um, the minor break-even electrical cost in aggregate also down there at around 34 miners who, by the way, have been selling a metric boatload of BTC. Thanks ordinal folks <laughs> for that. They have been offloading, um, assuming these are all sales, which, Hey, look, they may not be sales. They may be other things, but I'm just going to assume any net position change with prices up here are sales. And those are, those are continuous outflows in BTC terms. They, of course, have gotten a lot of revenue off the back of the ordinal stuff. So again, you can think of this as similar to GBTC, right? A supply shock in its own event, where eventually we want to see inflows reaching and exceeding daily Bitcoin issuance. That's step one. But if we can then also absorb minor selling, you know, then that's, that's everything, right? So we're not quite there yet. Miners' revenue, obviously, super variable based on a bunch of factors, but Miners in aggregate have definitely gotten much more BTC to sell. And, you know, as a percentage of total revenue, fees crept up a lot. That's calmed down a little bit. And we can look at, you know, the mempool. The mempool has calmed down a little bit, trending lower, but there's still quite a bit of uh, BTC pending in the mempool yet to be collected. And 
it looks like there's a little bit of an up uptick in unconfirmed transactions recently. And we can, you know, check that, double check that on the ordinals page on Dune. And what do you know? You see a bunch of fees popping up. You see ordinal issuance popping up again. So yes, we need that long term. That's great. I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm a doomer on price, but near term, that's going to apply additional selling pressure if the miners are offloading those fees on aggregate, it looks like they are. So all that matters, the only thing that matters is GBTC this week. That's it. And it's probably the most important to understand the flows data you are seeing is super delayed. On-chain movements are super delayed. So we won't really know what's going on realistically, you know, by Friday, because we want multiple days to sort of be sure. Are we going to continuously see $500 million clips come out of GBTC every day? We might, you know, we might. So it'll be an interesting week. That's for sure. ETH has done fairly well off the back of ETF speculation, off the back of some rotators out of BTC. But again, ETH's upside is limited based on GBTC outflows just because it's in the ecosystem. Not because people are offloading ETH, but eventually, you know, a rising tide and a, and a falling tide raises or drops all boats. So I would just be very careful expecting anything more against massive GBTC outflows if that's what we see. Target still looks good, still in the cloud, all that, all that jazz. Everything looks fine. It's just be careful with anything this week on, on any, any side. Daily Cloud looks good. We haven't tripped the support fractal yet, which is at 2100-ish on ETH here. But again, I can't say it enough. Nothing else matters until GBTC is done dumping on us. ETH discount has expanded a little bit. Also in the weekly cloud, also still has the target at 26. I mean, this thing could go back to 15. It could go back to wherever else based on whatever, right? Again, GBTC matters. The likelihood of an ETH ETF, which some people have as high as 70%, some people have it at zero. As long as there's a BlackRock application and it goes to the final deadline, I think it has a shot. The moment BlackRock pulls their application, if they do, it's probably over for an ETH ETF. I really doubt they would let this go to the deadline to get it denied, being their second ETF in history to get denied out of like 500 and 90 applications or whatever. So that's definitely something to watch for down the road as we get closer to those deadlines. But the essence of the ETH idea remains so long as the ETF is likely. Been a lot of celebration, celebration, celebratory, celebratory celebration on ETH BTC. It's bottom. This is it. You were wrong. That could be, like I said, you know, I'm open to changing an opinion if we start to close above the weekly cloud. We're far from that. Okay. And the weekly cloud is going to slowly move down here over time. To me, again, on any chart against BTC, the only thing that matters are the GBTC flows. So yes, we can have a short-term party, short-term rally on something like ETH BTC, but watch out once those BTC flows come, hopefully, eventually, you know, hopium and copium, sure, I know, but look, long-term ETH should not win in this environment. That's just the facts. And if ETH doesn't get an ETF, ETH is losing even more against BTC in the long term. So this looks okay, but I wouldn't I wouldn't celebrate just yet. We are above the weekly cloud, sorry, daily cloud for the first time, above the 200 day moving average as well. Underneath yearly pivot at the moment, the cloud is not fully bullish yet. So look, this is an early sign that there's some technical evidence that ETH BTC is recovering, but I think I'm pretty sure that will be short-lived. Now there are many alts. We went over this last week. Watch those videos if you haven't that have various degrees of edge to edge trade setup potentials. I think they are all valid. It's just a matter of what actually happens, obviously, right? And how do you manage that? How do you allocate into XYZ based on XYZ sector or XYZ number in the market cap? That's up to you as the trader, but they are all valid. Comp, SNX, Aave, anything in DeFi. Uh, most charts look really good on the weekly cloud. Anything that doesn't look good on the weekly cloud, I wouldn't even think about. I would just ignore it because you're going to have the best charts probably run first anyway. But it's a really good sign that total two remains in the weekly cloud. If things get ugly this week, for whatever reason, mainly GBTC, 
you know, drink, take a shot every time I say GBTC this video. Um, this total two value could get dragged down with Bitcoin. You know, it's not normal to see ETH up on the day and Bitcoin down on the day. That is not historically something we've seen M most times, many times, maybe ever. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. It's a very odd to see that. Uh, Alt BTC, the index also showing plenty of strength here, right? I think ultimately at some point relative to the GBTC outflows, this draws some sort of inverted head and shoulders post having, you know, you might have some diagonal resistance here this week, whatever, but broadly on the weekly chart, still not seeing evidence for rotations broadly. Obviously there are some coins that are doing better than BTC outright, but broadly on aggregate, not quite there yet based on the weekly, which admittedly may be too slow. Maybe it's best to look at this on a three day or the two day, something a little bit faster because alts do tend to move quickly. Let me just pull this up on the two day here. So on the three day, it is in the weekly, it's sorry, in the, in the cloud. On the two day, it is starting to get above the cloud. So I think the best chance for alts relative to BTC is going to be in the nearest of terms until we get those flows cranking into the spot ETFs on the Bitcoin side. There's also been some stablecoin prints that haven't really materialized for the most part that I can tell on the alt side just yet, but we've definitely seen uh, enough tick there. And then quickly, just Solana and Link. Solana still looks okay. This probably gets a bearish TK cross. The best trade, once again, will be resetting everything. Give this time. Give this, it probably takes the entire quarter for everything to heal. You know, we're still opening the wound that is GBTC right now. It's going to take a quarter, probably, for everything to reset and get ready for the most beautiful, perfect breakout, like that 28K breakout, like Sol at 25, right? To me, it's much easier to wait and be patient on the slam dunk stuff than have to worry about whatever chop is headed our way here. I think resting bids for Sol at 32, which sounds insane, totally fine. You know, anything from 32 to 79, I think is viable if things get loose relative to uh, the GBTC outflows. And then Link, Link is doing pretty well today. I don't think there needs to be a reason, but um, it looks okay. You know, it kind of is trying to reset itself. I think ultimately this goes into the cloud at some point just because I think BTC is going to drag everything down. So look, okay, I know I'm kind of a one-man band here. A, not a one-man band, a one, one idea man band. Yeah where uh, all that really matters is the GBTC stuff. But look, we're seeing potentially billions of dollars in outflows there. Yes, some of it's moving to other ETFs. I get it. Yes, we have global ETFs that are absorbing everything. I get it. But look at the chart, look at price, and you tell me what's the most important thing right now. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.